the Obama administration apparently spent a month considering the legal implications of targeting Jack Saylor, the American citizen who was killed in Yemen last month after being accused of being a terrorist organizer. It prepared a detailed and cautious memorandum to justify the decision. A refreshing change from the reckless legal thinking of the Bush administration, which rationalized torture, claimed unlimited presidential powers, and drove the country's fight against terrorism off the rails. But the memo, as reported by Charles Savage of the Times, is an insufficient foundation for a momentous decision by the government to kill one of its own citizens, no matter how dangerous a threat he was believed to be. For one thing, the administration has refused to make a public or even acknowledge its existence. It was described to Mr. Savage by anonymous officials and the administration will not openly discuss even its most basic guidelines for choosing assassination targets. The decision to kill Mr. Olaki was made entirely within the executive branch. The memo was not shared with Congress, nor did any independent judge or panel of judges pass judgment. The administration set aside Mr. Olaki's rights to due process. President Obama said Mr. Olaki, a radical Muslim cleric, had taken the lead role in planning and directing the efforts to murder innocent Americans. The administration said he inspired several planned terrorist attacks, including the attempt to blow up a Detroit bound airliner on December 25, 2009. Testimony in the trial of the accused bombers began on Tuesday. Officials have said Mr. Olaki's role went beyond insp uh, inspiration into operational planning of attacks, though they have not supplied proof of that. If the White House would release the evidence it has to back up these claims, it would have a better chance of justifying the cleric's death. The memo prepared by two lawyers in the Justice Department's Office of Legal Counsel said Mr. Olaki could be killed because he was taking part in the war between the United States and Al-Qaeda and posed a significant threat to Americans. But it stopped short of analyzing the quality of the evidence. It said, uh, aiming an enemy force deprived him of a children's, a citizen's due process rights, citing several Supreme Court rulings that put the prosecution of innocent lives above the risk of possible death of a suspect. Mr. Olaki was not entitled to full protections an open court trial in absentia would have been time-wasting and impractical, but as an American, he was entitled to some rights. The memo said Mr. Olaki should be captured if possible and feasible, an important principle even though the government did not believe it could safely put commandos on Yemen to capture him. Due process means more than a military risk analysis. It requires unambiguous and public guidelines for how the United States will follow federal and international law in approving targeted killings, particularly of Americans. And it means taking the decision beyond the executive echo chamber. We have argued that political review is required perhaps a closed-door court similar to the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court. Before anyone, especially a citizen, is placed in an assassination list, 
The Obama administration seems to know that anti-terrorist operations do not escape the rule of law. Its case would be far stronger if it would say so out loud.